today it's Mike VA3MW and I have this video I'm going to use it'll hopefully help out those that are new to SAT PC32 because I found that when I wanted to actually operate on the satellite it's a great tool but I you know it was impossible to get from A to B I've had I've got the radio set up it's communicating correctly so that's not what I'm going to discuss I've got my rotator set up and it's communicating correctly also really aren't I'm not going to discuss that much of that either. So I'm going to tie some of the things together that maybe you you can't really see in the manual and it'll get you to the next step. So uh, let's just close the countdown here. Um, but if you look under accessory, it's countdown and countdown shows all the satellites I'm watching. And how do you build that? Well, you can go look in the manual for the details on this, but under the satellites, you can build this list here. And uh, again, this has been probably well documented elsewhere, but it's important that you build the satellites that you want to watch. Um, how to update the caps is reasonably straightforward. I hit update caps, you know, for the, the elements. I hit download, download successful. I hit quit. And then you'll notice that down here that my uh, NASA and my files were updated today, which is the um, uh, 5th of uh, April and just hit OK and close that. Um, now, how do I track a satellite? Okay, I see AO7, uh, AMSAT Oscar 7 is coming by, but how did I get that active? Well, this alphabet down here, B, D, A, C, M, whatever, relates 100% to these down here. So right now we can see that B is highlighted. That means it's within my range. I'm in Toronto and uh, loss of signals in 20 minutes and maximum elevation is 34 degrees. But we can go look at, um, in, the ISS is going to go over in 15 minutes and I can click D here and there it is. You can see it's, it's over the Pacific, it's heading right through the core of the United States. That's pretty cool and there's its path. How do I turn these little dots on and off? Well this is the other control panel part that's super critical. And, you know, if you hover over, there's my rotor control, there's cat control for the radio, automatic sat change on and off, uh, VFO mode on and off, subtone on and off, uh, switch between local and UTC times, um, show acquisition and, uh, of signal, loss of signal, a CW mode, changes the mode of the radio, much like the tone for an FM satellite. Uh, M is so you can just show multiple or uh, just one. So because now we're tracking the ISS, we're only going to see one on the palette here. But let's go back to B, AMSAT Oscar 7. There's the footprint. It's moving that way. And this is the active one. Here's how the active frequencies. Well, how do I get that right? Because there's actually errors in the table. We'll come back to that. The zoom. So I can just zoom closer. There's zoom 1, zoom 2. Uh, G is the ground track that I was just showing. You can turn that on and off. Uh, Sunline, if you if you want to know where the um, where the gray line is or whatever. Uh, these are window sizes, so you can push that. I'm not going to change it here because it'll screw up my presentation. Um, you can have a different type of map load. Um, I prefer this one, and you can even go to 3D, which is really slick because then you have a good idea of what's going on. And let's, you know, let's go back to the ISS, which was satellite D, and you'll see its way over there. And it's, it's centered here. And I'm sure there's more you can do. So let's go back to B. This is the uh, frequency that's being sent to the radio. And you want to look up and read about, uh, there's only, was it the one golden rule or whatever. And that's to maintain your frequency at the satellite. And SATPC32 does that for most radios where you, you can see here that it's constantly changing the Doppler uh, or the frequency to compensate for the Doppler at the satellite. This allows you to have a QSO without having it to actually go tap the VFO and keep moving around. Then you just chase your tail all over the place. Um, let's look at some stuff here. So this is, uh, I hit the rotor so you can see, you can park your rotor and, and do some funny things there. Um, again, I'm not uh, going to go into the details of that or this video would go on forever. Cat. Oh, this one's important. 
So Amset Oscar uh, 7 has a couple of entries in a file, which we'll go look at in a minute. And it will execute the um, the first one. So just for yucks, I want to change over to um, uh, X-Ray Whiskey 2 Delta, which is M. Because I want to look at that cat file. And um, so we're going to go look at that cat file. And actually, the first thing I want to listen to is the beacon. And that's at 145.85. If I click that and make that active, it's going to command your radio to that frequency, less the Doppler change. So it probably says, um, oh, there's a way to change this, but I can't remember. But anyway, again, look in the manual. There's a different way. What I do, once I hear myself, I'll go, uh, once I hear the beacon, and I know that the satellite's in range and it's loud enough for me. So I go back to here and I wait a second. Um, my radio is updated every 30 is that three seconds i think i'll have to look up the um, units speeds one leave that alone and uh, that's how often it updates the radio i uh, 30 seems to be a good number for my 9700 then i start uh, I'll, I'll whistle just gently and see if i hear my my signal coming back you should have headphones on to do this and if you're at the same pitch that's great but if not if you're a little low or a little high I, uh, you can up and down the uplink calibration here to here. And this changes for every satellite. So as I go through uh, that and I get what I want, I will change and, um, oh, we have cat turned off. So can we turn that on? There we go. Uh, look up the calibration in the manual. I'll change that, I'll store it, and then I'll change my uplink calibration. And that helps me get closer for the next time. Now, I'm sure there's others that, that have been done more work in this and can fine-tune this for you. I'd welcome their comments in this video of, of the proper way to really use this. But again, we're trying to get the new user over that hurdle of trying to navigate SAP PC32. Again, this is from my beacon, and you can see on the bottom, this is the message in the data line. Well, heck, where do we find that? That's uh, We're looking at uh, X-Ray um, Whiskey 2 Delta. So we'll close that. And look here and it says auxiliary files and we want to look in Doppler and we're going to see all the satellites we may want to deal with. Now X-ray whiskey's 2 delta. Some of these I had to add on my own. Again this is in the manual so it's well written there but um, you'll see that there's three entries. There's an FM one uh, for digital which I've never listened to uh, but there's the beacon and um, you'll see that this um, uplink which is what it started to be after i redid my calibration it changed it so it offset by uh, 100 kilohertz higher and i think you're going to have to add um, some of the other ones on a new install and i think um, the two alpha one had the beacon on the wrong frequency but you want to go look in that uh, again ask in the email group on uh, amsat and people would probably happily share this to you when you're done you're just going to hit file save be really gentle on this document because if you mess it up you're gonna have to start over so now um you know if i want to track i turn my rotor on i have my cat control on and off on a 9700 you'll see it toggling you know if we're in this mode here you'll see it start to toggle uh the radio will flash back and forth and um unfortunately we won't have two delta by for another hour and a half uh, what else can we show you? I think that's the rest of it's f not not necessarily really obvious, but geez, that was the things that really got me uh, that I had to hurdle over. And, and this is what I want to do with this video is just allow you to get over the hurdle of of having the radio track. And by the way, I, once set up like this, I can actually turn the radio with the VFO knob, and I hear a guy. The transmitter tracks, and um, I call him. I hear myself, and I usually only adjust my uplink. Uh, if I need to fine-tune myself so I'm right on his frequency so I hope that helps I know it's it's pretty brief but that was the biggest hurdle I had and I'm sure there's much more features to leverage here uh, as you uh, go along but as you get through the ability to uh, to get your uh, your satellite and your rotor or your antenna tracking uh, hopefully that'll help you out a bit